Hi, in this video we're going to look at extended unpacking. So we're going to look at the first operator, the star operator, and much of this section applies to Python greater than or equal to 3.5. A lot of these uh, functions and this functionality that we're going to talk about was introduced in Python 3.5. So you should be running at least Python 3.5 for this video. You should probably be running Python 3.6, which is current as of the recording. So we don't always want to unpack every single item that's in an iterable. We may, for example, want to unpack the first value and then unpack the remaining values into another variable, right? We want to just stuff everything else into another single variable. So let's take a look at an example of what I mean by this. So let's say we take this list, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now we can do this by using slicing. So we could say A is equal to L zero and then b is equal to l starting at 1 up to the end of the list. And so we end up with a will be 1 and b will be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Or we can just use simple unpacking and combine these two lines of code into a single line using this. We're just doing unpacking, right? We're unpacking l0 into a and we're unpacking l1 colon into b. This, by the way, is also sometimes called parallel assignment, but it's just unpacking. So we can certainly write it this way, but we can also use the star operator in the following way. We can say a comma star b equals l, and it does exactly the same thing. It's basically saying when you look at l at this list here, or whatever iterable it is, take the first element of that iterable, stuff it into a, and then everything else, make it into a list and put it into b. So it's cleaner syntax. First of all, it's a little simpler writing this than writing that. But the other main difference is that it applies to any iterable, not just sequence types, right? Sequence types, we need sequence types in order to be able to slice, right? We need an indexable type in order to be able to slice. We need the concept of an index of, you know, element zero, element one, element two. But not all iterables have that property. For example, sets and dictionaries, you can't slice them. Right? There, is, there is no ordering in sets and dictionaries. So this, however, will work with any iterable type. So let's take a look at the usage with ordered types first. So let's say we write this, a comma star b equals this list. Now we've already seen what it does, and we know that we end up with minus 10 in a, and then b is a list that contains the remaining elements. Now, of course, we can also unpack a tuple, it doesn't have to be a list. So if we take a tuple or a tuple, then the same thing is going to happen. Negative 10 is going to go into A, and then 5, 2, and 100 are going to go into B. And here's what we get. So you'll notice that B is still a list. So we always unpack into a list, right? Even though we started off with a tuple, that doesn't matter. B, this, the B that gets created by unpacking, will get unpacked into a list type. Now we can look at a string. A string is an iterable as well. And so when we write this, well, we end up with A being the first character and B will be Y and Z. But of course, it's also a list, right? It's going to get unpacked into a list. So the following also works. You don't have to just have two, you know, one element. You can have two. So you can say unpack the first element, then the second element, and then the rest, right? So you can just read this star C as the rest. So we're going to unpack this, which is a tuple as well, into this tuple here. So we'll get A equals 1, B equals 2, and then C will be the rest as a list. So 3, 4, 5 as a list. We can also add elements after the star C. So in this case, we're saying make A the first element, B, so that should be the second element, then D should be the last element, which is 5, and then C will be the rest, which is three and four. And so we end up with that style of unpacking. Of course, it works with strings as well, since strings are iterables. So again, we're gonna get A's P. We'll get that B is Y, T, H, and then C is O, and D is N, right? C and D are the last two elements of the string. A is the first, and then B therefore is the rest, which is these three characters again as a list. Now that should be pretty obvious, but since that star operator means the rest, it can only be used once in the left-hand side of an unpacking assignment. So you can't write 
A comma star, B comma star, C. I mean, what does that mean? Right? B is supposed to take everything else. It's supposed to take the rest. But star C is also saying take the rest. So obviously that's not going to work. All right. So we've seen how we can use the star operator on the left-hand side of an assignment to unpack the right-hand side. As a reminder, right, we saw that syntax. But we can also use it this way. We can use it in the right-hand side of an assignment. So let's take a look at that. Let's take two lists, L1, L2, and we can write this. We can create a new list by using these square brackets. And then we're going to unpack L1 and unpack L2. So unpacking L1 means what? It means that we're, we're essentially going to create all these individual elements, 1, 2, and 3. And then same thing with L2. We're going to unpack 4, 5, and 6 into its individual elements. And we essentially will end up with the combined list. Right? So essentially we're able to merge two lists in this way by using the star operator. Of course, it works with strings as well. Right? It works with any iterable. So if we do this, then we'll end up you know, and we do again star L1 star L2, we'll end up with 1, 2, 3, X, Y, and Z. All right, so this is how you can use the star operator on the right-hand side of an expression. Now, let's take a look at usage with unordered types. So types such as sets and dictionaries have no ordering. So for example, let's say you create a set this way, and we print S. We just simply do this, type this in your Python console, and then print S, and see what you get. I got this. Your mileage may vary. You may get something else. Most likely you'll get the same, but you could, depending on the version of Python you're using or the implementation, you could get something very different. But at least notice that the order was not preserved, right? So there is no ordering in sets. There's no guaranteed order of any kind. It doesn't matter how you created the set or whether, you know, or how you appended values to the set if you did that. It's not going to maintain any of that order. So be careful. But the star operator still works, right? We said it works for any iterable. So you can certainly do something like this, right? So we can take a star b comma c equals s. But the problem is, what's the first element? What's the last element? That really doesn't have much meaning. So you'll get something, right? In this case, we get a is 10, b is 3 and d, and c is negative 99, which, by the way, corresponds to how we iterated through the set. So, you know, the results that you get when you're iterating the set using, let's say, a for loop or printing it out, well, printing it out maybe not, but you'll get the same thing there. But the bottom line is you can't count on any kind of order. So using unpacking this way is rarely used because it doesn't, you know, there's not a whole lot you can do with it. However, it is useful when used on the right hand side of an expression. So for example, let's say we have this dictionary here, and I'll use dictionaries now, and we have another dictionary D2, and we have a third dictionary D3. So you'll notice that H is in both D2 and D3. Now, if we iterate a dictionary, what do we get? Well, we get the keys, right? So iterating a dictionary is actually iterating the keys of the dictionary. So we can actually unpack the dictionaries inside a list. And what's going to happen is that it's essentially going to unpack the keys into this list. And so we'll end up with this list here. And you'll notice, by the way, that H is repeated twice. Now, maybe you want to get a list of all the keys that are in those three dictionaries, but without any repetition, right? If you keep the repetition, that might be useful to count the number of times a key is used, for example, because then you could go ahead and write some code to count each individual key value in here and how many times it occurs. But if you just want to know what the individual keys are, then instead of unpacking into a list, well, you could unpack into a set, right? And so we'd end up with a set. And of course, sets don't have repetitions. So H would only show up once. Again, the order is not guaranteed. I'm just writing it out this way so it's easy to read. But, you know, it's not going to come back in that order necessarily. OK. So when we worked with dictionaries, we saw that star essentially iterated the keys, right? So just as a reminder, if we did that, we just got the keys of the dictionary, not the values. We lost the values. Again, ordering is not guaranteed. I'll keep repeating that and hopping on that because that's important. So we might ask the question, can we unpack the key value pairs of the dictionary? 
How else can we retain the values as well as the keys? And of course the answer is yes. And for that we have to use this double star operator. So let's take a look at how that works. Let's do again those same three dictionaries that we had. Again, note that H is in both D2 and D3 and they have different values. H has a value of 4 in D2 and a value of 5 in D3. So now we can unpack and we're going to unpack these dictionaries into another dictionary. Now you have to note that the star star operator cannot be used in the left hand side of an assignment. That's a restriction on that operator. You can only use it on the right hand side. So you can't use it to unpack things into, right? But you can unpack the dictionary itself. So here we're going to stuff it inside a dictionary. And as you might expect, what we get back is basically that those three dictionaries have been merged together. So this is a quick and easy way to merge dictionaries. There's a little added caveat though. If you look at the value of H, it's 5. Well, remember we had H show up twice. So we can only have one value though. Keys and dictionaries have to be unique. But because D3 was merged last, that means that the value for H of 5 basically overwrote the value of H that at this point here when we merged D2 had a value of 4. That got overwritten essentially by 5. So that's actually pretty handy. You can use that in different scenarios where maybe you have configuration settings where you might have a config setting that's like your default and then you have you know maybe user specific settings and it might use the same keys because the user is overriding. Well you can merge the two dictionaries this way by merging your defaults and then your user configs and that will essentially overwrite any existing keys from the default with the user's settings and it will then fill in the gaps when things are missing from either dictionary because you just get a merge essentially. Again the order is not guaranteed. So you can also add, use it to add key value pairs from one or more dictionaries into a dictionary literal. So what do I mean by dictionary literal? Well just this, right? D1 here was defined using a dictionary literal and we just typed in the key value. Now of course you can do this. You can start writing a dictionary using literal key value pairs and then you can decide to merge in um, you know, another dictionary. So that works perfectly fine. And if you do that, we end up with A is 1. Why is A 1? A was 10. Well, we merged in D1 after we had defined A to be 10. So it's going to get replaced with 1. And then B is 2 and C is 3. Of course, if you want, you can also start by unpacking your dictionary first and then tagging on, you know, whatever you want as uh, key value literals. In which case, you will get A is 10 because even though A started its life off as 1 in D1, we redefined it to be 10 later on. And so that takes effect. Again, the order is not guaranteed. I'm going to keep hopping on that. All right, the next thing to look at is nested unpacking. So Python will support nested unpacking as well. What do I mean by that? Well, let's look at this list. This list has a nested list inside. The third element of this list is itself a list. It's itself an iterable. So we can unpack it this way, right? We can just say a comma b comma c is equal to l. So what's going to happen is that we're going to take the first element of l and put it into a. Well, first element is 1. We're going to take the second element, stuff it into b. And the third element is what? Well, it's the list 3 comma 4. And we're going to assign that to c. So c will actually be a list. Now, once we have that, we can also furthermore unpack c into two variables by just writing d comma e equals c. Right, so now we've unpacked this whole list into its individual elements, even the nested ones, into individual variables. But we had two steps here, right? We had to first unpack the last element and then unpack that element itself. Well, you can just write that, so we get d is 3 and e is 4, but you can just write that in this way. You can just say a comma b comma, and this element here is a tuple, and that's equal to that. So it's going to do the 1 into the A, right, the 2 into the B, and then it's going to unpack 3, 4 into C, D. So it's going to unpack 3 into C and 4 into D. So that's pretty neat, and it works with any levels of uh, nesting. Now since strings are iterables too, you can also write something like this. This will work just as well. And what are we doing here? 
Well, we're assigning the first element to A, so one goes into A. Um, C, D, and E is going to be assigned X, Y, Z, right? That's the last element, and this is the last element. So B will be the rest, which is 2 and 3, and then C, D, E, this tuple C, D, E, will be X, Y, Z. But what does that mean? Well, it's going to unpack X into C, Y into D, and Z into E. So we end up with A is 1, B is 2, 3, and then C is X, D is Y, E is Z. So again, that's just nested unpacking. Okay, so lastly, I want to come back to a statement that we made earlier that we can only use the operator, the star operator once in the left-hand side of an unpacking assignment. So how about something like this then? Right, A comma star, B comma, C comma star, D in a tuple. Well, it looks like we have two different star operators on the left-hand side. Well, that's okay, because even though it looks like we're using the star twice, this star is nested inside another expression. So it actually doesn't belong to the initial tuple. It belongs to a nested tuple. So that works just fine. Let's see how. Well, 1 will go into A. C, comma, star D is the last element, right? That's, a, that's essentially a variable. You could have said X, right? So X would be Python. So the rest is 2 and 3. So B will be 2 and 3. And this tuple here, this X, will be equal to Python. So now Python is going to get unpacked into C and D. So you can see the star D has nothing to do with what's going on as we're unpacking the outer tuple. And so C will be P and D will be the rest. So remember how we talked about slicing earlier and how you could you know, do a lot of this using slicing. And we saw that it didn't look that much simpler by using the star operator compared to slicing. Yeah, the star operator applies to iterables and the slicing you know, is more restricted. Uh, in this case, though, you can slice. We're dealing with lists and strings. You know, you can index them so you can slice them. So I challenge you to try writing this, what we have right here, but using slicing instead of using this unpacking and this nested unpacking. Try using slicing and don't, you know, hard code your values. So write it in such a way that it will work for any number of elements where the last one is a string or is any iterable for that matter and write it in such a way also that you're not restricting yourself to a hard-coded length of that string or whatever iterable it is that's going to be in there. So try that before we move on to the code in the next video where we'll actually look at the solution for that. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you in a bit.